welcome to another episode of Girls with Dogs. This is Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, a blog about the blah, blah, blah. And I'm here with my good friend, <laughs> Kathy, who writes Groovy Golden Doodles, which is a blog about blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, you can tell I messed that up, but we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it because a year ago, I used to do the number of the podcast episode. <laughs> And this is podcast number 42. Can you I believe know. that? 42. And then look, we cross over to another season and we just get cocky. And lazy. <laughs> and remember when we used to always go, oh, you got to edit that. Oh, cut. Oh, no. Stop, stop, stop. This means I can't hear you. Yeah. Now we well, just. Now going. that it's video, I'm just going to let it be. Because it's, it's real. And well, I think I that saw that's a magic. A, a, I saw a video the other day. Um, it was actually a really good video. I need to go back and finish it where this woman just put it out there. She was just like, you know, I'm not cutting this up. And I was just like, okay, I'm still watching it. It's not like I'm annoyed. So then so be it. But it yay. almost makes you think like we're going to get to see something because they're not cutting it. <laughs> well, as we will not talk about last week's intro. <laughs> well, as you notice, I'm wearing a sweatshirt today. That says Darwin's on it. And yeah, why? Because it's cold. It's, we have one cold day came through. It started, it was sprinkling a little bit. And I think it's going to get up to like 69, 68 degrees today after we've been in the 80s, upper 80s, low 90s. So yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure. And I had on first a t-shirt, then a long sleeve t-shirt. And then I just finally went and put this on because, and it's so soft. I love, I love when people make hoodies and the material so soft on the inside and the outside. It's like wearing pajamas all day. Yeah. We, we old people say that you must've been a preemie. You came out too early. <laughs> if you like to, to be just, you know, wrapped in well, swaddling clothes. I did come out a few weeks early. Oh, wait a minute. How rude of me. Let me give a shout out. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> I've named the vacuum cleaner Vanessa because it's always here now. And I, I feel as if I might, like, I need to just acknowledge her. Yeah, but, Vanessa's um, got some work to do today. So I can relate. I can relate. To this. Is, I, I mean, you, you do what you got to do. I, um, I did something so in. I had two social media um, hurdles that I, I just leaped over and I wanted to call you, but like I was saying earlier, and then you said, well, should we just go ahead and record this? <laughs> when I, I talk, when I call Kimberly, I, I have like chips for the week and, and I can't use all my chips because <laughs> at some point she's just like, she doesn't realize I'm trying to get some stuff done. <laughs> Free. I'm not answering her. I'll talk to her on Saturday. So um, I didn't call and tell you, but oh man, I was at work on Friday and all of a sudden my email and my text messages were going crazy. I just got a request to follow you. I just got a friend request. I think you've been hacked. You need to check your Facebook. I think you've been hacked. I could not work because the computer and the phone and my watch and everything was just pinging, pinging, pinging. And I had a Calgon take me away moment. And I sat down and I said, I'm going to have to speak to Greg. So I got with Greg Google and I went down the rabbit hole and I finally figured out how one can have a business Facebook page and not have to deal with a personal page. Mm -hmm. So excited. Be excited. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, Do I mean, know? I don't, I still have to have a, we still have to have a personal page. I just don't use it. Well, here you go, sweetness. You don't have to use it. What you do is go into your settings and go into your privacy. And you remember how you have an opportunity like six times to when it says, who wants to, um, who do you want to share this with? Mm -hmm. And you'll see public mm -hmm. and then you'll see private and then you'll see friends, right? Mm -hmm. But then I was telling you, oh, snap -a doodle! If you look, there's a drop down arrow. And if you hit the drop down arrow, guess what's hiding behind there? Hmm. A selection called only me. Yeah. So this stops everything from happening on that personal page. It doesn't deactivate it. It doesn't suspend it. And that's how you can keep your business or your 
I chose my new category as digital creator. I looked up the definition and I felt that I was beyond blogger now. So I promoted myself <laughs> after a damn decade and made myself a digital creator. Yes, that's my name now. And I sent this very nice fond farewell on my personal page to say, Tulu, I am done. I've gone dark. It's over. And so I was so impressed. You have that selected as only you? Everything on the personal page is only me. Because so people won't pretty... see that because that's what that means. No one no, can see it except I, for you. I am smarter than that. I Ooh. hit that first, then went to my privacy settings. Thank you. Oh, there you go. So yeah, the last- What I wish is that there was just, I mean, because I, I have- Usually, I only log, you know, because now you can toggle back and forth between your personal page and your business page. I go over to my personal page probably once or twice a week to see if I got a message or if anyone's saying anything to me. Otherwise, I'm just on my my business page. It's just easier. I don't have to see all the politics and arguing and um, none of that. I don't want to see any of it. I mean, I never really wanted a Facebook page. But I needed one for the boys and I get that and I'm okay with that, mm -hmm. but I didn't want anything. But when you go dark, oh, I just love this. When you go dark and I go back to my personal page, I can still see everything mm -hmm. that's going on. Yeah. And so if I wanted to catch up with who's sleeping with who and all that other kind of stuff and the, the, nine, the 90 second use for Dawn dish liquid, you know, that kind of stuff that you end up spending all your time on Bing looking at. I can definitely do that. But now I can focus on groovy golden doodles and I'm so excited. So then I took it to another level. I did my first reel on oh, Instagram. Did you? I did music. People loved it. So now I'm hooked. <laughs> I know it's and fun. I, like, I did one this morning too, ranting about something, which I'm and gonna I, tell you I was about. like, hey, this is pretty good. This is a lot of fun. I'm not ready I, I try for to do at least one or two a day. I'm not going to, over to Tiki Talking. I'm not doing it, not doing it. You can't make me. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna give up on TikTok. I mean, I think it's great and all, but I just don't think it's for me. Well, I know it's not for me. So that's why I'm not even going down there. So, so but- what are we going to talk about today? Well, first I want to talk about my morning. So um, I went and met a friend for coffee and we went to a farmer's market and I haven't been to a farmer's market in years and I am now hooked. It's too bad. It's, it, I think it's probably the last one of the year. So next year I'm going to the farmer's market. Okay. But, so this week I, I've been making my own broccoli sprouts. I was buying them, but they're pretty expensive and they're super easy to make. So these are fresh broccoli sprouts that I need to rinse off today. And then I had my friend take them and she freeze dried them, gave them back to me and I bl blended them down into a powder. So these are the broccoli sprouts powder that I made. And it was- No, I'm impressed. You need to mail that to me. I, I'm so excited. So I'm, I entered a contest this week to win a freeze dryer. <clears throat> but if I don't win one, I'm going to- buy definitely buy one are but they expensive the, huh yeah they they're in, ridiculously expensive I mean I get it it's machinery I'm not knocking the company for the price the um but for like home purpose ones you're looking anywhere between like twenty five hundred dollars if you're lucky all the way up to about thirty five hundred dollars and you can get like scratch and dent ones for a little cheaper or used ones since I'm not familiar with freeze dryer I'm hesitant to buy a used one because I don't want to spend the money, get it home and it doesn't work. And so I'm just going to buy a used one, or maybe if they have them, a scratch and dent one. But while I was at the farmer's market, I found someone that had microgreens. And so I bought bok choy, broccoli, and then I buy another one. Oh, sunflower, sunflower ones and parsley ones. I just thought it was cool. Microgreens are supposed to be super nutritious, just like broccoli sprouts are. Um, so I was going to um, make something out of these. So I'm curious, what are you using? Now, I'm interested in the freeze-dried uh, bean sprouts. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to like sprinkle that over their food? 
Yeah, I just, well, I just um, take a tiny bit because I, I use this right here was a full, like this isn't, this is a sort of like a half a, or three quarter full jar. But this right here was a very, a full jar of these. It broke down to just this much. So, um, and you only have to do a pinch of these into their food. So I just do a tiny amount and mix it into their food each day. It doesn't take lots. And so I'm gonna ask, she's going on vacation soon, but I'm gonna ask her if she'll freeze dry this, this bunch for me too. Oh, okay. And then when I get my freeze dryer, um, I'm gonna be going nuts. I'm gonna freeze dry everything. I'm excited about that. Oh, and I got some plants. I, I'm turning into a plant lady. So these are my new plants. Don't ask me what they're called because I don't know. Well, they're but, cacti. Well, this is a succulent and this is a cactus, but I don't yeah. know the actual names. But I like this one because it looks like it was on fire at some point in time. It's just, it looks burnt and I love it. So, well, all right then. So that was, <laughs> that was my morning. <laughs> that was your morning? So we're talking about blogging today. And I wanted to talk about this because I do, you know, on occasion get um, messages from people who want to maybe start a blog or a vlog or even just a Facebook page where they're sharing their, um, you know, how they're feeding their dogs, how they're raising their dogs, dog training type things, you know, yes. basically helping other people and educating other people. But a lot of people don't know where to start. And, you know, nowadays you could start anywhere. It used to be that, you know, we went to, what is it? Blogger and got blog spot, got a blog spot website <laughs> and just started writing and yes. changed the design like every month, changed the design, got a new template or something. Mm -hmm. But today it's a little more, I mean, people can still do that. I'm pretty sure. But today it's, you know, for the two of us, we have a full on website that we pay for hosting and, and we're writing articles, but, um, I, nowadays people don't have to do all of that. You can just start a, a YouTube channel or a Facebook page or Instagram and just start sharing. I'm seeing a lot of people build up. Yeah, know. but they're calling themselves bloggers. And is that really what that, that is now? I always call them, and that's what's so funny, and I get it, but I, I think of it as content creators because we're all creating content. It's just different, you know, what is it? Different um, forms. Yeah, different forms of content, different platforms. Yeah, because, platforms. you know, I, I ran across somebody on Instagram that, you know, called themselves a blogger and I was intrigued to look at their website and it doesn't exist. And all it is, is an Instagram page. And so, I mean, listen, I'm not hating, no harm, no foul. I just want to keep up with the latest trends so I can speak intelligently when I'm in a, in a, a live group yeah. of individuals. But um, I don't, I don't know. I do think, and I haven't done any research. This is just in my own mind. Um, I do think that the number of bloggers from the time we started has decreased significantly. So if you're listening and if you have something that you think you would like to start doing and sharing, I would imagine if you're listening, it would be relevant to dogs. Um, we're encouraging you to start. I love to see new blogs out there, but I, I just don't see as many anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I, I, to be honest, it's funny because it's like when I'm on Google, like I stopped following blogs years ago where, you know, I go and read what people are doing. I haven't done that in years because uh, most stuff is on social media. The only th time I'll actually go and read a blog is if I'm signed up to the person's newsletter. So I get a, an email telling me they have a new blog post. Or if in promoting their blog post, I see it come through social media and it's, it has an intriguing enough title that I go and read the blog post. In fact, I did that this morning. I was sitting in the car because I saw this blog post where with the title was like, I can't even wait. And I thought it was cool because I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a good, I'm, maybe I can write a response to this or, you know, I'm going to promote it. I was so disappointed because I, I went over to the blog post, you know, expecting this. And I won't, I don't want to say the title because it, it, I don't want to call anyone out, but I went over to the blog post expecting to read this. You know, I was really excited about this article and it was a bait and switch where oh. they talked about something completely different. And, and in the article, they said that their plan was to talk about, you know, this topic, 
but something happened. And so now they're talking about this topic, but they didn't change the title. And I don't know if maybe in their, so I don't know what their website and stuff does. Maybe once they have a title, they can't do a new, I don't know. But I was so disappointed because I mean, and it's not that the article was bad. It just wasn't what I was there to read. So, um, and it, it, things like that, um, I mean, it's just like, that's why I stopped, you know, I mean, I was just I, sort of like, you took up five minutes of my day <laughs> and I was lo- really looking forward and it's like, are you ever going to write about the article that w- went with that title? Cause that was like a really compelling, maybe I'll write it because it was a really compelling article, but I didn't get to see it. Well, and I'm also finding too, you know, so I, on my reel that I did, it was mm-hmm. Harley coming down the stairs in his grippers. Mm. And I did see that. I got so many questions about the socks, where they came from. People were sharing the same scenarios that I have mm-hmm. been experiencing, um, wanting to know what to do and how did I like them. And I finally... I was answering them and I thought this is the way it used to be Mm -hmm. when you would put something out there that was of interest to other people and people were taking the time to respond back and forth. And that was when I realized that I hadn't done a lot of that on the boys Facebook page, as opposed Mm -hmm. to always doing it on my page. And that's why I was like, I need to get rid of that. But what did you have an epiphany about? Well, what's cool is that, so this is, and for those of you guys listening, head over to YouTube so you can see what we're showing. But this is my profile. And I did this, you know, people, you know how on Instagram you get one link. And at first it was a link to my website. Then I had it be a link to like my newsletter. Like if you want to learn more, sign up for my newsletter. But I wanted to, you know, I've seen a lot of people have um, these, uh, is you know, the link in bio and it has a link tree. And there are a bunch, and I looked at all these different, you know, options out there and I created one with one company, um, but it, it was, it was free. So, you know, when something's free, you get what you pay for. So it was not that it was bad. It just wasn't very nice. And I wanted something that looked very professional. So I pulled up, so I created this with, it's a company called Linktree and you do have to, I mean, they have a free option, but I did a, a paid, one of the paid options. And I don't know if you could see it very well. But if you stop moving it. I know well, I can't. Okay. So, you know, it but, says you know, blog. I'm going to But scroll. the writing is in white. Oh, okay. Writing, yeah, no. The yeah, writing I, on the pink is in white. Yeah, I need to fix that because that's not very clear. But um, but yeah, these are all my links. So, so, you, so like if people, if you do a reel and you can like put on like a sticker on your reel that says link in bio. And if you want to promote those socks, you can put a link in there and they can just go to your, to your link tree and find the link to those socks. I must check this out. Link yeah. Isn't tree. that cool? I mean, I mean, I know we sound like a couple of boomers who have, you know, are just discovering the internet, but this time. Well, of- no, but you know what? So I told you that I got the wristband, um, business card, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Popple. And so this sounds a lot like what's on my band that I could literally just go online to my profile, cut and paste and put in there, um, which just takes you to everything about me. Uh Um, So I'm going to look into that link tree. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And so, and it's, you know, and I think I got the, the plan that's um, $5 a month. Okay. So not expensive. And I, it, cause I know in the end it costs like $48 for a year. Okay. And, and, and I was able to do that and it, it just looks so, you know, crisp and, and I was able to make the design how I wanted it. And, you know, and it was, it was simple and easy. I had one hiccup with it and had to go out and then go back in. And then it was easy to set up and create. And I was just like, all right, this is cool. I'm, you know, I'm happy. So let's, let's talk to, to Emmy. Emmy doesn't really exist, but I just need to have a name that personalizes her. Okay. Um, And if you need a visual, she's in her thirties. She's young. She's a professional. She has two dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, Great life. 
uh, but has a lot to say because the dogs are the center of her world. And she wants to share that with, with everybody that she knows and meet new people. So Kimberly, meet Emmy. And then um, you're trying so hard not to laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but how do we help Emmy get started, you know, with the blog? Um, first of all, you know, she's probably read blogs. So she's seen WordPress sites and all of that. And she's pretty, um, pretty well versed in the digital world. But mm -hmm. the things that I did not know when I first started that I wish I had have known uh, uh, is what I want to share. Okay. Just like you talked about linked tree in the beginning, I think I know for myself, I did not want to spend a lot of money. I kept saying, why am I spending money? I shied away from affiliates, mm -hmm. um, which I should not have done because that would have brought in just a little bit of cheddar to offset the minimal expenses of like Linktree and um, Hootsuite and all of these different um, devices that were supposed to help you generate um, you know, an SEO platform. But I think I would tell people, if you can afford to do one or two, um, a quarter, you know, go ahead and try to do that because I think that that helps get your blog out there. Um, I know I just beat the pavement and that was very, very painful and it took a long time. Well, I think, you know, if someone's brand new, what's her name, Emmy? Yes, Emmy. Emmy. If you are brand new at, at I was going to say raw feeding, <laughs> at, at blogging, <clears throat> I, I, I discourage people from spending a lot of money. And I think that a lot of people, whether you have money or not, it, I look at it similar to like when people join MLMs thinking that they're going to build a business. And this is not a slam on people who do the MLMs. It's more of a, for a lot of people, they don't have all the extra money to buy the kits and do all these things, but they're thinking that if I just, you know, you got to spend money to make money and that's true, but you need to spend money, you know, you need to be smart about it. Well, and yeah, really, $5 for Linktree. Yeah. I mean, really think about what you need. And so before you run out and buy anything, you know, think about what platform you're going to start with and then start educating yourself about how people are promoting themselves on that platform. Because like with with us, we have a website. So I earn revenue through my website by having advertising on it. But when I'm on social media, a lot of the money that I earn is through sponsored posts and through affiliate marketing. And for those of you guys who don't know, affiliate marketing is I sign up for an affiliate program with a brand that I love and trust, and I promote their products. And when you guys buy the products through my links, I can earn a commission. Um, not all of the links and not all of the things I promote do I earn a commission on because not everyone has an affiliate program, but um, that's something that, you know, that's how you can make money. But for a lot of people, as you're building up that audience and stuff, it takes some time to earn people's trust and to, to set yourself up as someone who can be trusted and then have them want to buy your things. I, I always go by a rule of it takes three to four months of me repeatedly talking about something for people to be interested enough to buy it. And I think you can shorten that time, like with your video with the, um, the socks, where when people see the solution and they see how it's working and they see that it works, that's when people are like, okay, where can I buy that? Because I've had that experience like when I did my first batch of broccoli sprouts and showed them on, and everyone was like, where did you get the seeds? Where did you get the seeds? And I wasn't even prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So I went and said, here's the link for the seeds. Um, it's an Amazon link and Amazon doesn't pay bloggers a lot. Um, so I'm not, I don't really care if I get money for it or not, but you know, you need to be prepared. And so that's why, that's why I love the link tree is I use the, the products that I most talk about. So for me, it's going to be raw feeding, um, CBD oil, um, and essential oils that I most talk about on social media. I have links to, and then you, what you can do is if you have like a special promotion going on where you have a sale going on, or you're working with a brand, you can put their link in there temporarily. 
until it's over and then take it out. But, you know, I have our podcast. I changed the, the font to black. Oh, thank you so much. That, that's a lot easier. It, so. Yeah, I couldn't see it. And then your fat finger was just all up in the <laughs> way. And, you know, you kept flapping the thing. It was bad, but that's so much better. <laughs> you have redeemed yourself. Thank you. So, but I have our podcast here and I have, you know, raw food here, except for one of my raw foods is missing. And so I need to fix that. Now, what I do, I, I have evolved now into really trying to support local businesses um and I and small business that's Mm -hmm. my that's my Achilles heel if I come across something that I really really like I am more apt to approach the person and say look I really like this so since I'm coming to you why don't you send me you know fill in the blank And Mm -hmm. then I will go ahead and use it. And then I'll do some writing for you because I know that you, I don't tell them this, but I know that they're struggling to get started. And with COVID, you know, for me to tell them to pay me to advertise, it's just not fair. And it has turned out to be such a phenomenal relationship Mm -hmm. um, with these particular brands. Now the big box brands, yes, I'm still going to charge you for, um, my time. And mm-hmm. I remember when you really, really showed how much you loved me by just cutting me down to the knob, the <laughs> knobby knobs. Um, when you asked me how much I was charging, then you asked me how long it took to do the video, to edit, to take the pictures, to process, to write, to research. And then you said, so really, you know, he's going to pay you 11 cents an hour. And I was like, well, <laughs> damn. Like, so basically you're paying them to promote yes, this stuff. <laughs> yes. And so I remember calling you the first time that I asked for what I thought was an illegal amount of money. And the person came back and said, yes. Uh, remember the wacky, the wacky walker leashes? Mm-hmm. And he said, but I want to do four for the year. And I was like, say what? Um, but you know your worth going in, know your worth. And then you have to think long and hard. If you want to be just a general blogger, why do you keep looking off to the side like there's a snake in your room? Um, I always check on the dogs. Oh, see what okay. They're doing. Um, are you a general uh, blogger or are you going to be a niche blogger? Because that's important. Yeah. And then if you are going to be a niche blogger. You're niche you, bloggers. Yeah, you have to look And do the research to see just how many are out there because you don't want to get into um, a category that is already saturated. And, um, you know, I'm just going to put some, you know, you know, uh, (laughs) know, so so when you're promoting products that you, (laughs) (laughs) you know, when you're promoting products that you, believe in <laughs> no but I was gonna say oh, we- I can't with you I can't wait, wait, wait I can't I can't um <laughs> come <Why>? again <laughs> you know when you're talking when you're talking about how well things work <laughs> you know don't miss any opportunity no, no, you know you take what you can to talk about it you know, <laughs> you know? boy and All right, so, if you're listening, you're going to have to go to YouTube so you can see what we're doing. <laughs> so, but, so we're, we are niche bloggers. So my niche is raw feeding and your niche is golden doodles. And granted, there's a lot that we can talk about within that. When I first narrowed my niche to raw feeding, I was one of the few people online writing about raw feeding. So my traffic skyrocketed by over 500% after I made that change. Today, there are tons of people in this space and they have taken over social media and I love it. Uh, You know, I had someone email me and ask me how I felt about all the competition and I don't look at it as competition. I look at it as there's all of these people who I get to collaborate with, that I get to be friends with Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, think about anything that you're very passionate about. And when you sit down with someone who's equally passionate about it, you know, it's fun. You have these conversations, you know, when I'm with my friends, you know, the, that are also raw feeders and we're at an event, 
this is something that happened once that was so funny because um, I don't think Billy and I realized we had done it, but we okay. were all is this, is this the same damn Billy I haven't met? <laughs> this is the same Billy. <laughs> Anybody else out there ever met Billy besides <laughs> Kimberly, Rodney, and um, now what's that lady's name? The CBD lady? Angela. Oh, Angela. Yeah, yep. you're the only three people I know that know who Billy is. <laughs> well, Billy and I, we were talking about raw feeding and something happened where Billy was like, oh, and I was, I was thinking, and he changed the topic to Marvel comics and the Marvel movies. And he and I had this like conversation about it. Everyone else is looking at us like, what? But that's like, it's still fun. It's fun when you can, you have someone else that loves something as much as you do. And you can have these type of conversations. I mean, it's like you and I, talking about our dogs, we have fun having these conversations. So to me, I don't look at other people who write about dogs or write about raw feeding as competition. I look at them as potential friends, people I can collaborate because with. Because everybody has their own um, take. You know, everybody has their own direction in which they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to talk about the dogs, but I talk about it from such a different perspective. I include life in Charleston. I include the therapy work that they do. Mm -hmm. I include, you know, I'm this old ass lady with these two dogs. I mean, you know, there's the so many other things and, that, yep. that other people with golden doodles would be talking about that, what they're doing. So I find I'm not a raw feeder um, and I'm okay with that, but I enjoy following keep the tail wagging it is um you can never if you have that passion for dogs in this case you can never ever um to me like get bored with it yeah. so I mean um, I learned I, I I don't do nose work I'm fascinated with joy and what she does with her dogs you yeah. know but um so it's it's the things that you enjoy reading about Mm -hmm. As opposed to, um, you know, I guess not having a passion that you like. Well, you never know when you're going to learn something or connect with something. Because, I mean, going back to the socks, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people leaving those comments, it wasn't like it was only people who have golden doodles. It's people. No, they were people who have senior dogs. Exactly. So it's like, you'd never know where you're going to learn something. So if you're sitting here thinking, I'm not going to start anything because there's already people out there talking about it or writing oh, about no, it. Oh no, start. No, everyone has a different take because we all have different animals at home that have different conditions that are different ages. I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes to raw feeding, I am very easy. I, I like to, you know, what is it? They say, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. I, that's my, my brand of raw feeding. I want it to be easy. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I don't want to spend tons of money Mm -hmm. feeding my dogs. I don't want to spend hours trying to formulate meals. And this is not a knock, knock to anyone that chooses to, to work with meal formulators or become a licensed nutritionist and do this as a living. That's great for them. It's just not for me. So I have a different set of content than like, for instance, there's a, a blog out there, um, Perfectly Rawson by Ronnie Lejeune. She is, she has um, studied animal nutrition. She is certified. She offers meal formulation. There's also raw feeding 101 by Scott J. Marshall. He is also, um, I think he's getting certified, but he also offers meal formulation. He offers, um, boot camp and coaching and, and he has a course where you can learn how to feed raw that, that is awesome. The two of them are adding such value to the community and it doesn't make them better. It doesn't make them less it just makes them different messages. And I learn from both of them and I have my own, you know, we're all on a different path. We're just like going in the same direction, but we're just on a different path. And you have no idea holding back the information that you have, holding back the stories that you're able to share, how that's going to impact somebody else's life. And you will never know until you start it. Now you can start it. And if it's just not for you, you could stop it, but don't like prevent yourself from experiencing something that could very, very easily um, become such a natural part of your life. Um, yeah. I, I can't, I remember a period when I don't know if you want to call it burnout. 
Um, I just remember when I was trying to figure out what direction I was going in. Um, because again, if you are focusing on something that is tailored to a specific breed or work that the dog does or whatever it is, your, your nutrition, um, you, you got to really know where you're going. Mm -hmm. But I can't ever remember saying um, I've had enough. It is just such a part of, um, of my life. I remember enjoying Pamela Webster when she would talk about honey and their preparation to sell their home and they bought the boat and they were going to live on yeah. the water and all of that. Um, they docked in Charleston every spring. We would get together. So cool to hear the voice of somebody that you've been reading um, mm -hmm. and play with the dog. So when honey died, the blog went away and it was mm -hmm. such a void in my life because I could tell based on the seasons where they were um, geographically because they have to get away from the hurricane um, areas and, and such. And it was just so enjoyable um, to learn about boating and not that I want to, but I, I got a chance to live her world, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so then it all abruptly stopped and that's yeah. sad. So yeah. I want more bloggers out there because I still like to read other blogs. Yeah. I love it. I, I mean, it is, it's, but I, she was one of my favorites because um, I did, I loved just learning random things. It's not, I don't know. I, no. I get a kick out of it. And, you know, and I know that a lot of people do social media where, um, you know, they're not reading blogs anymore. I know that a lot of the traffic that comes to my site, in fact, you know, 80% of the traffic that comes to my site is people who are looking for an answer to something. And um, so I try to write, I'm going back now, um, speaking, you were talking about burnout. There's a time I hear a beeping Johan's home. He's going to go buy another motorcycle today. But anyway, um, I, um, you know, I, there was a time when I was just like, I don't, I don't have any more to say. And I was just like, I'm done. And so what I did after close to 10 years of writing, I started going back to the beginning again and looking at my first articles that I was writing. And some of them, you know, uh, most of them actually have changed because I've learned so much over the mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And so some of them got deleted because, you know, this content isn't important anymore. Um, I, you know, I don't feed kibble. So there's no point in me having a article about kibble on my website. And also kibble companies change over the years. So I don't want something either promoting or talking about a kibble company where the information is just not accurate anymore. So some stuff I deleted, some stuff I rewrote and republished. And so, and that's what I've been doing all this year. I've only written a few um, original pieces. Most of them are me rewriting old stuff. And that kind of spurred up some more inspiration and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and having fun again with the blogging. But you know, I think the cool thing about social media is that you can take a nice break from writing uh, because most of my content now is doing reels and doing posts for Instagram and Facebook and, and then us doing, you know, the podcast. This is fun. You look so serious. I still, I still enjoy the writing. I, um, I think for me, I want to write less now, less as in I want to shorten my posts. And so that's what I've been working on. I haven't looked at republishing. I just didn't go back. One time I went back to just try to fix some things and it was exhausting. I poured a glass of wine and sat on the porch. I couldn't do it. And, <laughs> and I, I haven't attempted to go back and do it anymore, but. It's um, kind of fun. I think it's sad in some cases because I have articles that were centered around, you know, an issue with Sydney or, and, and now an issue with Scout. So those are sad to revisit sometimes for me, mm -hmm. um, but I still do it. And, you know, or, you know, when I have articles, I'll be rewriting an article and it says in there, you know, well, we, you know, our five dogs or our four dogs and we're down to three dogs, three dogs now, dogs. you know, and so that, that can be a little, and I'm trying to generalize them. I still want my blog to be about my blog, but I'm trying to generalize um, my content a little more so that anyone can use it. It's valuable. It doesn't matter what you feed. And because I, I truly believe that just because I'm a raw feeder doesn't mean that people who feed kibble can't well, learn you've something. Already, you've already made that paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't like, I could lie, but I won't. 
um, because you're looking (laughs) at me. I can't tell you what had happened, but you went from an eccentric raw feeder, which I was okay with. I knew I wasn't going to do it, but I found it intriguing and interesting. And then you just started to take this turn where it wasn't so much the raw food as much as it was learning so much about the proper nutrition. And then you started helping people regardless of what they were feeding, Mm -hmm. how they could implement certain steps, you know, to go with what they were already doing to try to improve gut health and work with these types of um, problems and allergies and, and whatever the dog is going through. So you already did that some time ago. Yeah. Which generalized your site a little bit. Yeah. I just, I just don't, I mean, again, no knock to people who are super passionate. I looked at um, raw feeding. It reminds me of born again, Christians where you find God again and you're just so passionate. Another analogy where something like, is so wrong with you. <laughs> people, people who quit smoking and, you know, they can't stand the smell of smoke anymore. And when people are smoking, they want to tell them, but i I figured board of green Christian was always better because it's like, you're ready. I mean, when I was new to raw feeding and saw it helping my dogs, I was ready to go door to door. I was that obnoxious person that would be like, I, I would try to spark up. (laughs) Johan quit going to the grocery store with me because I would try to set up things where I would spark up conversation. I'm going to show you what I used to do. This is so obnoxious (laughs) that I did this, but let's pretend like I'm at Costco and I see people looking at the treats and stuff. And they used to have these one um, chicken jerky treats and um, where I'm, I'm at any store. And I see people looking at them. And so I didn't think it was any of my business to go and tell them you shouldn't buy those. Those aren't actually aren't really good for dogs. Um, it wasn't my business to do what I did instead either. But this is what I did because I was born again. I would go and stand next to them and I would pick up the same product and I would look at it and be like, and you start oh. reading it out loud. No, I, but close. I would turn it around and look at the ingredients and I would, I was, it was a full on performance and I am not a good actress. So God bless the people that didn't just go lady, but I would look at the ingredients and be like, oh, and then I put it down and start walking away. And, oh, you know, nine times out of 10, the person would be like, oh, well, what did you see? And I was like, oh, well, I just took this course in animal nutrition and it talked about the ingredients that aren't good for dogs. And I would go and look at this and be like, that's not good for dogs. And so I just don't want, I just want to be careful. And they'd be like, oh, well, where'd you read? Where'd you get this course? And I'd be like, oh, it's this website called Dogs Naturally Magazine. I mean, I was just like, (laughs) I wouldn't have gone shopping with you either. I mean, I was, I was obnoxious and I don't know what changed, but something changed where it's just like, everyone is doing, everyone's doing the best they can. And I think, you know, Mm -hmm. it was hearing about someone once told me about a woman that would go to Costco and yell at people who were buying kibble. And I was just like, why would you? why would you do that? And it probably happened around the time when I started, I had a raw feeding group and I noticed how nasty people were to each other. And, um, they would make all these assumptions and I would start asking questions. So if someone posted a picture and they're like, Hey, thanks for adding me to the group. Here's my dogs. And their dogs were overweight. I wouldn't be like, why are your dogs so fat? What are you feeding your dogs? I would just be like, Oh, you know, I notice that your dogs are overweight. Do they have a thyroid issue? One of my dogs is overweight and it's something that I test it for. And so I'm always interested in what other people are learning about their dogs because it's hard to get the weight off of her because it was, it was Sydney. And I would start a conversation. And what I found was whatever my assumption in my head was, was always off. You know, I would, I learned about so many like diseases and stuff that dogs can have um, that led to, you know, it was astounding. And so ever since then I started asking questions instead of making assumptions. And that was kind of the shift in my writing as well, where it's just sort of acknowledging that just because I have a website and I make my own dog food does not make me an expert in raw feeding. It makes me knowledgeable, but I'm not an expert because I have so much to learn. And I welcome that. And, you know, 
it's really made me enjoy what I do. And it's actually made raw feeding so much easier for me because I'm not an expert. I, I'm just knowledgeable. That's how I feel about my poor little broccoli, carrots, and cauliflower. <laughs> this week, uh, instead of the Honest Kitchen beef broth, I'm putting the um, ultra oil in there. Mm. And um, I figured that's one way of getting it to them without squirting it in the bowl. I'm actually really excited because um, Lifeline sent me a some of their oils, four of their oils. And Lifeline is a brand. They make fish oil and they also have an organic kelp. And I've been using their products, gosh, for, I don't even know for how long. Um, but they sent me, I'm trying to look up their, this, cause I wish I had it at the table so I can just show you, but they sent me their oils and they have one that is a hemp oil. So it's a fish and hemp oil. And so I have that Gosh, I cannot, I'm trying to, you know what I hate is when you Google um, a company and all these other companies come up because they bought the keyword. And so you go to a site thinking you're going to that company and you're not, you're going to someone else's site. Are you saying Kemp or hemp? Hemp oil. Okay. Um, hemp oil. So I'm trying to pull it up to tell you what the other fish are. Yeah, I gotta buy, that's not to write it down. I gotta buy my CBD oil. Oh, you haven't bought it yet. I'm ready. Well, <laughs> it's an omega fish hemp seed oil, but they have a whole bunch of really cool ones. And so I've been alternating those and adding them to the dog's meals. Nice. And they are loving them. Loving nice. them. I just, I, I love this type of stuff, you know, just learning about, you know, when I was, cause when I got the oils, I was looking up like what's in the oil because I do, there's a salmon oil, there's a, you know, a Pollock oil, you know, there, I think there's an ancho, I think it's an anchovy and boar. I think it's called boar. That has to stink boar. like hell. But that's just it is they don't. That's what's not, I mean, you can smell, it smells like fish, but it yeah, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't um, stink up your house, which is astounding to me. But, um, but yeah, the anchovy borage oil and I look like what's borage. It's a root vegetable or like it's a root. And, um, it is very high in omega-6 fatty acids, but, and I'm just like, uh oh, because I always thought, and this is what it comes down to. I love learning these things. Omega-6 fatty acids lead to inflammation. So that's why it's like, if you have a dog that has um, allergies or is limping and has arthritis, you want to stay away from foods like yes. chicken and other foods that are high in omega-6 fatty acids, unless you know how to offset it to bring it down. So I'm like, well, why would I want this oil that has a ingredient that's high in omega-6 fatty acids? Well, I don't know the details because I'm still you know, learning this, but basically there's a component of this specific food. And there are other foods out there like this where it's not the same omega-6, you know, there, the components of it don't lead to inflammation there. It just makes it super highly anti-inflammatory. So now, you know, blows my mind. I have been walking this earth for years thinking anything with omega-6 fatty acids was bad for my dogs. And now I know, no, you need to actually re you know, read further and learn okay. more about it because, and, and it's those type of things, it makes me pause and stop. And I have to revisit everything that I've believed in the past. And so that's why I, it's, I love blogging. This is why I love all of this stuff because it's kind of cool to learn all these things. I mean, like the other day or the other day, several podcasts ago, that whole thing about the dryer syndrome for senior dogs, I had never heard about that until you brought it up in that episode. And those are the type of things where I love um, following different people, regardless They're of- They're called dryer seizures. Dryer seizures. Yeah, that yeah. is like amazing. I did not know that that was something that existed. Well, you know, I thought the jerk was making it up <laughs> until I got home and, and asked Greg, Google, <laughs> um, you know, to, to tell me, is that, is that a thing? And I found out that that's a thing. And by the way, Harley had his second bath, um, Thursday mm -hmm. and, um, 
when I got there and I asked Andy how, you know, how he did, she was like, we're back to the way we were before you left. She said, he's leaning in, you know, almost giving me the body part. Mm -hmm. And she said, not a problem at all. She said he may have been a little more aggressive, but she's going to come on the podcast and talk about what groomers see with senior Mm -hmm. dogs and the changes and things that we as dog moms or pet parents can do to, um, to help um, with that, because she said it is a real thing. Yeah. And so I thought that you would um, find that to be very interesting. Yeah. Um, Before we go, because Harley's on the steps. Okay. I I want, I wanted (laughs) to um, make sure that if we have anybody in the Michigan area that's listening, um, keep up through your veterinarians about the parvovirus. It's consistently getting a little bit um, more popular in your region and in your area. And for those of us that are not in Michigan, still, you know, be talking to your vet, especially if your dog goes to um, doggy daycare or is going to dog parks and things of that nature. I am a, um, a victim of what the parvovirus can do. And so I, I just need that I need to say that because if I don't, and then I hear something, I'll feel like horrible afterwards. So just be careful with your dogs. This is a seasonal thing. It will come and it will go. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just, just kind of be cognizant of who your dog is. I started to say sleeping with, but who your dog (laughs) is. And I would like to add to that. And again, this is no judgment to people who do this because I did it as well. And I totally understand why people do it. But if you have a puppy, keep your puppy at home. Yes. Don't take your puppy to the store. Don't take your puppy, you know, down the block. Don't take your puppy to the dog park. Don't take your puppy puppy to the pet store. Leave your puppy at home. Your puppy's immune system is not fully developed. And I don't care if it's a six to eight week old puppy or a five to six month old puppy. If your puppy is new to you, give your dog the time to build that immune system. When we get puppies, I will... I will take my puppies in the car with me places, but they won't get out of the car or I will put my puppies, you know, I've seen people put puppies in a stroller because you want to still do the, what's it called? The socialization, put them in a stroller. So they're not touching the ground and walk them around the block. I do not allow people to handle my puppies unless, you know, we got to wash the hands, wash the feet. My friend, she fosters puppies all the time and she has a little dish that's filled with bleach water so you could put your shoes in there to kill any type of things before you go and handle the puppies and these things are serious I too have had a dog that passed from parvo and it's no joke it's not it's I understand they're cute and you want people to see you with the puppy but whenever I see people out and about with these little vulnerable creatures, ah, oh, just makes me scream inside because that puppy is not safe. Take your puppy no, home. No, you know, no, you're right. Don't invite people over. I ha- I've heard, you know, stories of people who their friend came over after they worked, you know, a shift at a vet clinic and tracked the virus into the house and boom, made, you know, the puppy sick, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, it, it's just as easy as that. So already, we all need to stop going to the dog park, folks. Just FYI. Those are not safe places. Just stop going uh, to the dog park. Yeah. Do a sniff spot instead. You can get together with your friends and you guys can get a sniff spot and you'll be perfectly safe. This is not a sponsorship, nor are we being paid for that. It's just great, good common sense. The more you know. The longer you live. Stay, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> run harley run (laughs) harley's like i'm not running anywhere because my socks are on my mom's shoulders now listen do you know that harley was just a prancing down the street the other day i mean he (laughs) was you know that little tail was wagging he just he looked like a whore on 42nd street he was (laughs) and i said to myself why you got all this giddy up well, hell, I forgot to take his socks off. And so he was out there. 
So I saw this other shoe. Mm -hmm. Oh God, rip and roar or rip tide or rip something. They look like um, Michael you know, Jordan tennis sneakers. It wasn't until you started talking about all these that I realized how many businesses out there <laughs> make, are making shoes and socks for dogs. Damn. Well, you know, the, here, this is the way I see it. So Lee said, um, he said, Kathy, how many of these things do we have <laughs> around? I said, oh, we got tons of them. And so he said, I said, it just seems like it's a lot because you get four in a pack because he got four feet or four paws. <laughs> but um, what I really like about it is, can you see this? This little black thing? Yeah. I'll do like you do. Can you see that? <laughs> okay. So that's a snap. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it with me. You, you go all the way into the camera. And then you're like this. Can you see this? Can, can you see this? But uh, <laughs> those. <laughs> and I killed her. I killed her, everybody. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Damn. <laughs> All right, come on now. The people listening are going, what's happening? Uh, come on over to the visual side, y'all. This is why yeah, we're doing it. Come over to the YouTube side. I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be so worried next time. Why? I'm gonna be showing stuff from here. Yes, that's see, look at that. that is like you can look at the details. Look at all the mm -hmm. details. I got your details. And then you move it so I much. Know. But those are actually the snaps for the Velcro that go oh, around. Okay. And so I only use the, I only use the Velcro at night um, so that I know that it stays on. So if he gets up and decides to go down and get water or something like that, I know that he's going to be okay if I don't hear him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but during the day, I just take the Velcro off, but it's just kind of cute to watch him with his little socks. He just feels like he owns the world. And I thought, so they had another shoe that looked like um, Crocs. I'm going to send you these two links because I want okay. you just to put them up there. But they look like Crocs, but they look so damn uncomfortable. Like mm. Crocs to me are uncomfortable. Okay. So these sneakers, the only thing missing is a number on the side, you know, <laughs> like number 23. They're really pretty cute. So I'm going to get a white pair because I'm thinking the white on white, when it's moving about, you can't even see that homeboy got on his air jordans you know <laughs> so we'll see and these things are not that expensive they're oh, like okay. 20 they're like 20 bucks oh really because yeah, i would have thought they'd be like 75 dollars no something. no they're really 25 30 bucks they're not it's not like i'm making a huge investment the grippers are like 14.99 hmm. so i bought enough that you know a dog can go in a sock probably three or four days until you have to then put them in the dirty clothes, uh -huh. you know, cause their feet stink. And um, yeah. So I have enough that we can rotate. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So they I, do I, do, well. I do that with um, Apollo's collars because he came up to greet me when I got home today and I was like, Ooh, you stink. You need a bath. Yeah, but but yep, then I that's... pulled his collar off and was like, oh no, this is what stinks. This is what stinks. Do we have a comment before we go? <clears throat> this okay. is also by Ivy Dragon Breath. And this is on our last podcast with um um or a podcast uh, two podcasts ago with Angela about the CBD oil. Mm -hmm. And she says, Great podcast yet again. Kathy, I am so glad that you are you because you ask the questions that us who aren't like Kimberly have, and it is so important to not feel a little taken aback by such a conversation. I use Apoquel with my nine-year-old girl, Ivy, with terrible allergies. She's on 2.5 milligrams a day, and I'm hoping to reduce this by using CBD and hemp oil. Unfortunately, I'm in Italy, so I'm unable to make use of the amazing products on offer for you guys in the U.S., but we do have an amazing CBD shop close to us. So that's what I love is that, you know, because you and I do come from different spaces, 
both of us are asking the question. That was very and, complimentary to my third grade level of knowledge. I love it because it, it's so important. There's I, I, I don't know everything about CBD oil, but I've been using it for a long time. So a so, lot of the questions I have aren't the questions you're going to have. Did, I don't know if you had a chance to read my um, blog post about the CBD oil, but I, I started talking about you and I was actually cracking myself up. Um, <laughs> because... <laughs> I'll have to go read it then. Uh, wait, I'm going to tell you. Okay. I, I'm going to share this just since I don't have a comment. Um <laughs> I said, when my podcast co-host told me about an interview with Angela Ardolino of CBD Dog Health, timing couldn't have been better. Um, I said, Kimberly has been using CBD products for years with her pack, and I have not. If her knowledge of its use, benefits, pros, and cons on dogs is at a level 10, then my experience and knowledge level is at a negative eight. <laughs> <laughs> my and favorite is... Is this going to get my dog high? Well, see, that's what I said. Color me CBD crazy, but between my ignorance and her street corner drug dealing whisper. <laughs> and now I got to let you go read the rest. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, it's, it's real and I put it out there. I put it out there so nobody can, can be afraid to ask to ask those we gotta questions. ask the questions we gotta ask the questions but um, i am i'm so excited about getting started so um i'll keep everybody posted but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and order my bottle of ease and then i'll probably call you or facetime you and say okay i'm getting ready to give this to harley now watch <laughs> me watch me oh maybe i'll just make a reel out of it it's super easy. It'll be quick. All I do is I take my dog's head, tip it back, let him go. I may have to try like put two drops and then do like the horses. No, no, no. You, that's not enough. You need to do a dropper full. Feel that dropper or, or as high as it'll go and then do it over the gums. That's all you got to do. You do okay. that much. You do not do two drops. All right. Okay. Okay. Your dog right, is not right. a little tiny mouse. <laughs> <laughs> if my dog is starts swaying back and forth. If your dog is not going to sway back and forth. <laughs> it is not. If you're not giving him gummies. You're not giving he, him edibles. <laughs> if he takes his 13 and a half year old behind and starts counter surfing for the first time in his life. <laughs> looking for bread and anything <laughs> left over on the back of the stove. I'm coming for you. I'm just I'm putting it out there. Okay. <laughs> If I come home because I missed one of the CBD um, distributions and he in the corner with the shakes, I'm coming <laughs> after you, okay? Just letting you know. And, yeah, we're not talking about dabbing. And um, if I find him on the corner on about... his back soliciting any bitch that walks by, I'm coming after you, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to interview Angela again because you need to be educated more. Oh, and I used to be worried from the dog perspective, just so <laughs> out there, just, just so putting it out there. Um, hey, listen, I got to run, but as always, it's been great. Yes, it has okay. been. And um, go help Johan. <laughs> you do anything fun for International Dog Day? No. Okay. No. No. I okay. Didn't. Just, you know, hung out with my dogs. Well, then that's what you did. I noticed <laughs> but, though that a lot of um, companies like Chewy and Scout and Zoe, all of those places were saturating social media with all their sales that they were having. Yeah. Were I've gotten saying. to the point where, yeah, I, I ignore the sales and. Well, I, you know, I couldn't make myself get anything because I don't need anything. Yeah. And a lot of the sales on these like off holidays, you know, they're giving you like five to 10% off. Yeah. No, you give me 20 to 25% off. And that's when you'll get me being like, oh, what? I have. Offer a BOGO deal? Um, you can offer a BOGO deal and I'll be at your website. There we but go. I, I have 
started uh, buying treats, well, treats, like the ultra oil and some other stuff. I started buying those from local stores. Mm -hmm. I'm really concerned about the local stores. Um, The food is still coming from Chewy. But if I decide if there's some stuff that I need to replenish the pantry, um, I'm doing it locally. Yeah. One of my local stores, they were open every day. They're now closed on Sundays. They had dog wash stations. They closed their dog wash stations. They're just, you know, it's the economy is hitting them. And so I get my cat food from a local store instead of ordering it online. I just go there and pick up my cat food. Yeah. Um, They're struggling. So if I can help (laughs) in that regard, I will. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. All y'all. right. We'll say good night, oh. Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs>